Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Downtown Sports. I'm your host, Megan Townsley, and I know it's been a minute, been a little busy, but I'm back and ready for another video. This one focusing on the NFL, uh, my love and soul, even though it's just June. That's okay. I'm still excited to talk about the NFL. But first, I wanted to get into kind of some news that you might have heard of about revolving around Valley Sports San Diego. It's the company that I used to work for. Unfortunately, Diamond Sports, aka Valley Sports, decided not to pay the San Diego Padres a rights fee, therefore transferring our broadcast rights back to the Padres and to the MLB and completely getting rid of my broadcast. So not working there anymore. It's pretty sad because I've been working there for a long time, but that's okay because with that, whenever a door closes, another one opens. So I'm still really excited. I just recently started a position at DraftKings, so I'm going to be a content editor there. And I've already met with the team and everything, and it's been great so far. So again, like, hey, if things go wrong in one way, it's okay because good things are on the horizon. Got to stay positive with that. So the fact that I have like little Manny Machado here with the Valley Sports is, it's sad. It's sad to say the least. And I think our broadcasts are better, but it's okay. Whatever. I'm not salty. I'm just a little salty. I have my poster right there. I might take it down. But with that being said, let's get into some notable news here in June around the NFL. In June for the NFL is it's very interesting. It's I would say it's like when you go to like a family dinner and you haven't seen your family for a long time and your grandma's like, how's your life? And you say like, oh, I walked my dog the other day. And she's like, it's the biggest news she's ever heard in her entire life. Like anything that's really small and minute is like all over Twitter, every single headline. Like it doesn't even really matter, but it's because nothing else is going on. So we have to talk about it. People got to fill their shows. Producers got to put some content on the ground. So, it, you know, we're going to talk about a lot of different random things. But one of the headlines that really caught my eye, and this is 100% because I'm a Green Bay fan, was Romeo Dobbs, Romeo Dubs, I'm gonna call him Romeo Dubs. Romeo Dubs went on record and said, I'm gonna read the quote right here. Quote, I think Jordan is a Jordan Love is a really good quarterback. When you go from Aaron Rodgers to Jordan, Aaron was a really great quarterback, but I believe Jordan can do the same exact thing. End quote. Now that's a really, really bold take because you have Aaron Rodgers, who is incomparable really he's one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time you look up any stat everyone knows who aaron Rodgers is and it's not just because of his media antics everyone knows who he is because of his quarterback play it, he's he's incomparable you really can't so for someone like romeo Dobbs, who's really young i don't know if he was trying to just get under roger's skin or what maybe he really believes it but hey as a green bay fan that makes me excited to hear because Love is really one of the greatest mysteries of the NFL right now. No one's seen him play. OTAs are very hard to find content on. Like you find like maybe one five minute clip every two weeks because you can't really, no one, you can't really get the content on OTAs. So to hear anything about Jordan Love makes me really excited. The other thing that I think that is coming to realization, I think a lot of people who aren't Green Bay fans and just around the league in general is the fact that Jordan Love is the same age as his young receiver core, Christian Watson, Romeo Dubs. Jordan Love. They're all around 24, 25. And so they're able to create that personal connection outside of just being football players. Like I, there was posts about them like hanging around uh, Wisconsin and doing whatever they want to do, but they are, they're the same age. So, I mean, you have that bond there and chemistry is huge when it comes to any sport. You need to have that chemistry on a team to be able to play well and to care about each other. So you're not just gonna, like, Jordan's gonna throw the ball to them. Aaron Rodgers didn't want to throw the ball to them is what I'm really getting at is Rodgers was not a fan of his young wide receiver core. And I don't necessarily think that's just a generational thing. I think Rodgers was just, he's been on the highest horse his entire career and wasn't used to not playing well. And so these young quarterbacks kind of got the brute end of that. But that's why I'm really excited for Jordan Love because he has the opportunity to write his own story. He has the opportunity to not just be the guy who's taking over after Aaron Rodgers, but to be Jordan Love, the quarterback one of the Green Bay Packers. And obviously Green Bay has such a great track record with, with quarterbacks. It's not like he's getting thrown into a random system that doesn't know what they're doing. They've had Bart Starr, Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers. I'm not saying necessarily Jordan Love is gonna fill those shoes, not this upcoming season, but he has a chance to make a legacy of his own. And that's what I think is really, really exciting. Um, offensive tackle David Bakhtiari went on the Richard I or the Rich Eisen show the other day, and I really liked what he said about Jordan Love. He said, "Quote the control and the demeanor in the huddle." End quote is what he really liked about Jordan Love and how he's been playing in the OTAs. And personally, I there's so many media folks trying to just throw out like, "Oh, Jordan Love's doing this OTA. Jordan Love's doing this." But I like getting my information from like the actual source. So. David Bakhtiari, the guy who was there, who was watching Jordan Love play in OTAs. And what I really liked about this is he just said that he's confident and he's really starting to find himself because 
Jordan Love, again, was just the guy sitting behind Aaron Rodgers. He didn't get any playing time. Rodgers, I'm assuming, didn't even show him the ropes or anything, and so he's had to play behind the mask, and now he's able to take that quarterback one position and find his own quarterback style. Bakhtiari also said that he's playing with a more advanced look on the field instead of just getting the uh, getting the play call and just executing it that way. He's able to read and really adjust to different things that are going on, through, like call the audible and stuff like that, which is, it shows he has a higher IQ than what other people might think. But again, this is very minimal information. This isn't even video. Some of the video that I saw, his releases weren't very great. His spirals weren't coming out very nice. So I'm not... I'm not out on Jordan Love. I'm not high on Jordan Love. I'm excited for him and he's a mystery. That's pretty much all I have to say on that. But the other big headlines that have been going around obviously is DeAndre Hopkins leaving the uh, turmoil and disaster that is going on in Arizona. But hey, it's a rebuild season, two seasons, maybe rebuild four seasons for them. There's some people who are saying they might go 0-17 this year and I think that's kind of mean, but hey, if you could set a record in some way, go 0-17, you guys. Do it that way. But there's not really any bad things you can say about DeAndre Hopkins. There was no bad blood over there. The reason is he was just too expensive. He's a veteran wide receiver. He's been on top of the charts for all of his career. He So he's worth a lot. So they're in a rebuild season. They need to use that money elsewhere. So that's why they got rid of him for any of you who are wondering. But the real question is, is where is he going to land? Now, some of the teams that were in talk were the Buffalo Bills. Some mentioned Kansas City. Some mentioned Tennessee. He actually today took a first stop on his tour, finding where he wants to go in Tennessee. Um, we're going to get into Will Levis later, but imagine Will Levis throwing to DeAndre Hopkins. I don't think I really want to see that. That wouldn't be very fun. The, it really comes down to the fact that, yes, of course, someone like DeAndre Hopkins wants to go to a Super Bowl contending team in the same way Odell did. Like, you, all, the Odell has a ring. He wants to go to a team that's going to get him another ring. But the problem comes to money. Everything comes back to money, I, I swear, in this league and just all the other leagues in general. But Bengals don't have cap space. The Bills, it, it would be financially irresponsible to try to go out and get DeAndre Hopkins. But I mean, they did meet with Odell, so I guess they, they're they fine with spending their money. Kansas City, they don't even need anyone. Kansas City is fine as it is. They could go win another Super Bowl how they are. Like Kansas City is just Kansas City. They're insane. So personally, I think going back to one of the podcasts that DeAndre Hopkins was on, and he stated that he wants to play with Josh Allen. I think that'd be a great marriage there. I'd really like to see them there, especially as we see Josh Allen, who's already an incredible quarterback, just get better. Like, I think his ceiling is so high and all he really has to do is just be more, is just be careful with the ball and kind of careful with himself too. So he's not chucking his 6'5 body at people and getting himself injured. That's, that's what I think he needs to do. So I think that'd be a, giving him another option could really take the Bills to the level of skill that they need to be to win a Super Bowl. I don't know if they could go past. I, the, the Chiefs are honestly insane to me. Like the Chiefs are like so far up here. Then you have the Eagles, but it's like the Chiefs are just like, they're a monster up there. So for Josh Allen to have to get past them, they're going to need a lot. I don't think DeAndre Hopkins is going to be that number one factor that they need to win a Super Bowl, but I think it will help them throughout the entire season, um, fill some of those holes that they had. And the thing is too, like Gabe Davis, yeah, he's great. Obviously, Stefan Diggs, but DeAndre Hopkins has that it factor. He's he's different. He's special. He's able to catch a Hail Mary ball in triple coverage. Like that's really what he brings to a team. So I would love to see him go to the Bills. Okay, so I'm a huge fan of the 2023 draft class. I think there is some incredible talent here, not just quarterbacks, but just across the board. So I'm kind of starting this new segment where I just want to stay in touch with the rookies, kind of see how they're doing in the preseason, how they're doing in OTAs, how they're going to do throughout the season. I just, I really like these guys. And I think that they found some really unique players, even some that dropped that should have gone higher in the draft. So I just think there's so much talent. That's really like some starters too. That's really going to add to the, all, to fill the holes that a lot of these teams need in their rosters. But OTAs, it's not that much footage again, like I said, and you got to remember with OTAs that there's no pads. So it's, it's practice, but it's light practice. And no one's going to be tackling or anything. There's run around in shorts and not suited up or anything. So We'll be, let's start with Lucas Van Ness. Uh, he was Green Bay's highest um, pick. A, some of their coaches are saying that in OTAs, he looked the part. Uh, it's not much meat in that sentence right there at all. Uh, they said that he was a constant in the backfield. But the thing that really struck to me is that Packer staff is saying that they think he can play anywhere, inside, on the edge, and that he's going to be really great for him. And that's the thing is he has like super long arm reach. He's a physical player. He's a determined player. And in some of the footage that I've seen, like he doesn't give up. He's he, not unstoppable. He does not give up. 
And so I think he's gonna be a really great addition to our team because I mean, we got a lot of things we need to work on. But anyway, glad to hear that about him. Will Levis, oh, Will Levis. I, I just, I hate, I don't wanna talk bad about Will Levis because of, you know, his experience of the draft and kind of how sad that was. Like he was like memed completely, but I'm gonna talk bad about Will Levis. So I, you did it to yourself. Anyway, I, go look up some footage about Will Levis. I wish I could post it on here without it being copyrighted, but it, it he's, he's struggling in OTAs. He is struggling. And one of the main concerns of him coming out of college was his accuracy. And some people were like, oh, you know, but Josh Allen wasn't that accurate. And now look at him, he's Josh Allen. But it, he just, Will Levis does not have that talent. He is throwing in a double coverage, according to some of the people who are on site in Tennessee. He's fumbling snaps. He's inaccurate, like incredibly inaccurate. Like if there's this one play where he, it was just a simple throw and he went way over his target. And it's really discouraging to see these kind of updates and information come out so early in the off season because hey if you're not suited up you're not going full speed and in otas you can't complete a simple pass that it's not a good look on you like we can see some players come out where they don't have the best show out in otas and like pop off like i hope that happens but i just i just don't i don't see it in will levis i really don't even when i was watching some footage in college he seems injury prone to me he's too cocky for the kind of play that he puts out it's extremely inaccurate and yeah you can fix that inaccuracy but come on man like if you're gonna turn the ball over as much as you do you're not gonna be an nfl caliber quarterback so i just i'm i'm all the way over there on will levis i'm not i'm nowhere near in on will levis i just that's all i gotta say about that one but cj stroud let's change it to a happier note cj stroud is blowing people's minds and otas over in houston obviously he's a second overall pick some say he could have gone first so i mean we really expected him to play this well but the thing that really stuck out this is all over social media if you go and look but the his coach said that cj stroud his performance in otas is quote eye-opening that's not something you hear a lot in the nfl because a lot of things i wouldn't say are predictable but you've seen a lot of things you compare like a certain play to Patrick Mahomes, you compare a certain play to Aaron Rodgers with his arm strength and stuff, but CJ Stroud, he's been showing them something different. And at 21 years old, he's so, he's so young. And I just, I'm so excited to see what he's going to do in Houston, especially for a team that hasn't done anything for years. So he's probably going to be the guy to turn this franchise around. Um, and this is also, this is kind of funny, but not that Case Keenum's opinion really matters in this take because he's what their third string quarterback like when's the last time we've seen him play but he said that CJ Stroud has only been playing for the heat for Houston in practices for three weeks and he looks like he's been there for years some are saying that he looks like he's been a four to five year vet like that's how skilled and talented and poised he looks already and another thing that the head co coach was saying that he asked a lot of questions during the practices so he's very humble he's not scared to ask those questions he doesn't walk in there with a huge barato or bravado and trying to just like hype himself up and he's he wants to learn and that's so so important especially in something as intense as an nfl practice like you need to put your ego aside and really just show that you're there for the team and the show you want to learn especially at, at age 21 like he has so much left to learn so that was really exciting to hear very very excited to see cj stroud grow and he's his, his ceiling's all the way up here like he doesn't even have a ceiling honestly and now my here's my lukewarm take of the day and it's 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 less of a lukewarm take and more just like my personal favorite player to watch this season but anthony richardson man i already talked about him before in one of my last episodes but anthony richardson i just think is such an anomaly coming into this class and especially for the reason that he's 20 so even younger than cj stroud but he is such a dominant presence on the field and some of the video that i was watching he's i mean he's six four which is it's tall but he's just towering over all these people and i think it's that confidence that he exudes but it's confidence that he owns and when you watch some of his throws like his darts come out almost perfectly his spirals are on point his accuracy which is something that people were concerned about before he got drafted he's insanely accurate his th like his release time is super fast like he is you can tell by the way I'm talking extremely fast. Like he is gonna be so, so good. I'm really excited for him. And the last rookie I got on my rookie OTA watch, Jackson Smith and Jigba. Probably the who people are predicting to be the best wide receiver out of this class. Him and, and Zay Flowers. I'm very excited for Zay Flowers too. But I mean, the cool thing about JSN is he's just doing what we expected him to do. He was already so impressive back at Ohio and 
Geno Smith, which, you know, he's a great quarterback, so it's nice to hear kind words from him, but Geno Smith says that he's already been, quote, impressive at practice, and that's what we expected from him. So there's really no updates on that other than the fact that he's kind of checking out with how we expected him to be. Um, so he's someone that you should definitely pay attention to this upcoming season, especially the Seahawks. Like, the Seahawks, I think, could be dangerous this year if they sharpen up that O-line, but yeah, JSN, he's going to be a good one to watch. I'm really just waiting for football to start. I really want football to start. I'm just sitting here, just looking at rookies, man. I just want, it's June. How much longer? July, July. It's a long time till the season.